The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. So Ben, what are we doing this week? Oh, I've been studying the human brain a lot lately and I've got this great idea. I was thinking we could combine both of your brains into a single brain unit to create the ultimate employee. Maxa Felix. Yeah, I saw that on the schedule. I feel like um, that's not safe or, or plausible, so I don't, I don't think we should do that. Yeah, I don't agree to that. Maybe we could put our heads together, not, not literally, please, and um, come up with something different, just anything else. Yeah, something electronics related. Well, I do have a hankering to make another Z80 computer project, and I was thinking, people ask us for combination systems all the time. Maybe we could make something where we take the common core of a system, like a Z80 RAM and ROM, and modify it so it can become other systems. It could become a master system, or a ColecoVision, or a CPM computer, kind of like a transforming butterfly robot. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah, much less dangerous, mm -hmm. sounds good. Okay, let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bandam hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In the past, we've had a lot of requests to build combination systems, combo systems, like a PlayStation mixed with a Super Nintendo or a Sega Genesis mixed with a Dreamcast. And I never really find those very interesting because they're just a bunch of things crammed into one box. I mean, we can make the box look cool, but that's not really a mental challenge. So what I like to do with this episode that we're calling Game Brains is to try to make a combo system that's at more of a, I don't wanna say molecular, but granular level, two completely different words. The idea is we'd make a base unit, or the brain, that would have a CPU, RAM, logic, ROM, PSU, and controls that would stay the same. And that would be the core of the system. And we would pick something that's very common, like a Z80. And then you would put things, attach things to that, which would turn it into other systems. So you attach the minimum external components and it becomes a ColecoVision, or it becomes a master system, or it becomes a CPM computer. And by doing this, we could show that you can make a combo system by picking systems that have a lot of similar components, historically. There'll also be a cartridge media disc slot that will allow you to load your programs, games, I guess a game is a program, or operating system. So to start this project, we'll figure out what we'll do for the brain unit. In a past episode, we talked about the differences between the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. The Game Brains project is all about finding the similarities between systems. Two systems I find pretty similar are the ColecoVision and the Sega Master System. They both have a Z80 CPU. They both start with an 8K ROM BIOS at the beginning of memory. They have separate RAM and video RAM buses, which frees up more space on the Z80 bus. They have 16K of dedicated video RAM hooked up to the separate processor. Their GPUs are similar. This is actually an evolution of the ColecoVision's GPU. And they both look at their controllers by using an IO port mapped to the Z80. So I think this would be a good basis for the system. If we can get these two to work together, then we can easily add a third Z80 system in the future. Here is the Sega Master System guts. We have a Z80, ROM goes here, RAM, glue logic, video, video RAM and then a video conversion chip here. And I made this adapter so I can plug my own ROM in. I have plenty of these EEPROMs after I raided that old video game distributor. I'm gonna check to see if the ROM image works. So there should be a splash screen. Yeah, there it is. So the ROM works. What the Sega Master System does is the ROM boots the system, and then if it sees a cartridge, it actually switches the ROM off and switches over to the cartridge. Kind of weird, but that's what it does. So let's turn it off. Try it without a ROM. It should do nothing, because there's nothing for the processor to do. It will also do nothing if there's just a game, because it can't boot properly without the ROM. Let's put the ROM in, so the system can boot properly. There's a splash screen and it should go to the game as well. All right, now here's the cool part. It's not using the ROM anymore, so we should be able to actually remove it. 
By the way, never do this, even though I'm about to do it. Let's see if the game is running. Okay, it's in demo mode. Oh, I ripped out its ROM. So that just goes to show that once it uses the ROM to boot the system, you don't need it anymore. So we need to build a system where we can switch the ROM on and off as well as the RAM and the other things. So yeah, it's good to test this with a working system before you wire something from hand and then find it doesn't work. I printed these chips and I drew them to scale so the pins match up. I'm gonna try to figure out the best way to line them up. We have A7 through A0 here and we also have A7 through A0 on the ROM there so that lines up pretty well. Doesn't really line up as well on the RAM but what are you gonna do? Although the RAM data lines down here at the bottom, they actually match up to the ROM data lines. But I'll probably put it on a different sides just so I can kind of keep them straight. So I have the ROM here, CPU here, RAM here. Uh, I have this extra RAM, but I don't need that. Of course, for the video, we'll have two RAMs. I'll have to figure that part out later. I'll start with the CPU and ROM. Here's the basic system I have so far. There's 32K RAM, which I'll map to the top of memory. This should be all we need. Z80 CPU. Then we have two ROMs, actually. Both of these will be mapped to the bottom of memory. There's a 16K ROM and a 32K ROM. 16K ROM, we should be able to put both the ColecoVision and Master System BIOSes into it, two 8K BIOSes, 16K. The 32K ROM I'm adding for a future system like a CPM system or possibly MSX. So I'm gonna get this bus wired up and then we'll go from there. After the chips are installed, I begin by laying down thicker power and ground lines. I wanna do this first so all the thin data lines can go over them if need be. I first attach the address lines beginning from the right and working my way to my left. I do this because I don't want to solder between the pins and then melt the wires. So I have to lay everything down in a certain order to make sure the bus is nice and clean. Had I been thinking, I would have used colored wires for the data lines and the black wires for the address lines to keep them straight, but I still should be able to manage. Some of the wires I actually run through the board just to help wrangle them. In this case, the uh, non-data wires for the Z80, such as halt, refresh, and non-maskable interrupt. It's all about keeping all the wires flat and neat and clean, not just so they look nice, but when I'm working at it, they don't break or tear or get ripped. At the left end of the board, my left end of the board, will be a port for attaching other devices. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Remember a few episodes back when we made a single-handed pinball machine controller? If you go to element14.com forward slash TBHS, you can check out an interview I recently did with Todd, the person that we built it for, and see what his progress is. Here's a sneak peek. There you go, Ben. We're gonna give it a try. It's a good little unit where I can move from, from game to game. And I have a few games that I've modified, just putting a switch over myself, and uh, uh, which works nice. But this is nice to be able to work to uh, have different games to be able to play at different locations. So I want to appreciate you. Thank you for all your help on that. And, and uh, it's just been amazing. A little ride, a little journey. I think we're going to take it to Dixon, California this next couple of weeks. I got a uh, pin festival over there. And uh, I guess give it this public debut. <laughs> All right, I've wired up the main bus. This is A0 through A14, going to the ROM, ROM, and RAM. We also have a ground rail, power rail, and the data bus as well. And out here, this is hopefully where it will connect to the thing that makes the system, so the um, master system core, the ColecoVision core. If you look at it from the front, so CPU, ROM, ROM, RAM. These wires coming off the top, these go to the read write lines, chip select, output enable, and all of the uh, halt, refresh, reset, non maskable interrupt stuff on the Zlug 80. So these lines will be used by the external circuitry to control which one of these is being accessed by the CPU at which time. I have the Z80 single board computer pretty much all wired. I don't have the memory addressing done yet, but everything else is on there, the entire bus. So there's a Z80, two ROMs, and a RAM. 
Uh, the reason I have two ROMs is so we can choose what we boot to. And I'm thinking, you know, ColecoVision and Sega Master System. So I created dumps of their BIOSes because they both have BIOSes, which stands for Basic Input Output System. They're both 8K, so I'm thinking we can put them onto one 16K ROM. One will be at the first half of memory, the other one will be at the second half of memory, and then we can use the A13 pin to choose which bank we are in. So that allows us to choose what system we boot into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the SMS BIOS here. I'm just gonna select everything with this hex editor, copy it. I'm gonna go to the Coleco BIOS, go to the end of its memory, paste, okay. Now what I pasted appears a different color, so that's pretty handy. If I wanted to like put a secret message in the ROM, I could. So we see we're uh, at 2000 hex, which is 8,192 bytes. That's where the uh, Sega ROM starts and the Coleco starts at the beginning of the ROM. Because the ColecoVision came first, so I'm putting that at the beginning of the ROM. That's how I remember things in my brain. All right, so I'm gonna save this as Coleco. Oh, ColecoVision. Coleco stood for Colorado Leather Goods Company. Coleco, fun fact. So I'm gonna just call this my dual BIOS. So it's gonna be a 16K ROM. Now I have my Batronics EEPROM programmer that I got from Elma 14. It's really nice, it's made in Germany. Steel, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to uh, identify the chip and it's written on the chip. This is a Fujitsu MBM 27128-25 DIP28 BIOS. So, all right, let's program the chip. Let's uh, browse to, we don't want the Coleco ROM, we want our dual ROM. Cool, all right. Well, everything looks okay, program. So I like to say EPROM and EPROM. So it's E-P-R-O-M, which is erasable programmable read-only memory. Then there's E-E-P-R-O-M, which is electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. Uh, the difference is just an erasable programmable memory means you have a little window and you have to erase the chip using a UV light. Whereas E-E means it's electrically erasable, which means your computer system or your circuit can do it. Uh, most modern EEPROMs are electrically erasable. This is pretty ancient technology, but for this project, it's perfect. We uh, got a bunch of old arcade game boards from a distributor that went out of business a few months ago, and we basically stripped tons of Z80s, RAM, and bucket loads of EEPROMs off of them. So I have more EEPROMs than I'll probably ever need now. To test our game brain circuit, I've removed the brains of the master system, and I'm going to plug our game brains into the expansion port to see if I can still get the master system to boot. If this part works, we can proceed with the project. I need to attach a temporary card edge connector from my header port to the Sega Master System's expansion port. As before, I do this one wire at a time, making sure that I connect the entire bus and most of the signals coming from the Z80. We don't need all of those signals in order for the cartridge to work, but we do need those signals to go to other parts of the Sega Master System in order to get it to boot up. But thankfully, all of those signals are on the expansion port. Wow, they were really thinking ahead, weren't they? I also use a little bit of pink post-it note to label the wires to help me keep track because we have to wire this from the front and the back. So the data sheets I reference, I have to flip over in my mind every time I run a wire. For testing purposes, I've attached a card edge connector to our game brain brain module. Right now I just have the Z80 in there. And this card edge connector can go into the expansion port of the master system. If you look here, I've removed the Z80 and the ROM and the RAM. So we're going to basically replace it with this and it'll also be compatible with the ColecoVision or we hope it's compatible with the ColecoVision. So for this test, I'm gonna do one thing at a time. I'm just gonna make sure the Z80 was replaced. So I'm gonna put the original RAM into a socket, put a burned ROM where it goes. Make sure the pins are right. Okay, let's see if it works. All right, let's put in everyone's favorite game, Action Fighter. <laughs> Everyone's favorite game. Cool. All right, the next steps are going to be to transplant over the ROM and the RAM. I'm going to try it now with the replacement ROM. So this is a 16K ROM. The original ROM is 8K. Uh, the first half of the ROM is ColecoVision, so I have A13 tied high, so we'll go to the second half of the ROM, which would be the second Master System BIOS. 
And I'm just gonna grab the uh, enable pins from the original BIOS location because we don't have any logic address circuitry yet. Let's see if it works. It works! Next, RAM. Okay, now I'm moving the RAM over to our Game Brains board. This is the 32K RAM that I've installed on the Game Brains board. It's going to replace the RAM that was on the Sega Master System. Let's see if it works. We're transferring one thing at a time out of the Sega Master System into our Game Brains core. And if it works here, it'll work for the Master System or the Coleco or a CPM computer or whatever. So we're basically using this as a test bed. Okay, let's try it with a game just to make sure. Although if there was no RAM, it wouldn't do anything because it wouldn't have a stack. Sweet, I can still play Action Fighter, my favorite game. In today's episode, we began work on the Game Brains video game project. We created a Z80 core along with RAM and ROM and connected it to a Sega Master Systems expansion port to see if we could get it to work with the Sega Master Systems video processor. In future episodes, we're going to expand this to also include a ColecoVision and a CPM computer, and we'll be able to switch between them on the fly, a true combo system. That's all the time we have for today. Be sure to check out element14.com forward slash TBHS for more information on future builds, episodes, and upcoming events. We'll see you next time. I'm not gonna tamper in God's domain there. Bless me, bagpipes, all of my treasure is gone. It was like aggressively stupid. Like a parent trying to use a computer. A couple months ago, we raided a distributor's warehouse. Well, we didn't raid it. <laughs> I'd be like, Booger, oh, it's beauty. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.